My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. I'm Siwapiti Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today I'm here with Louise Miranda Ramirez, and she's chairwoman of the Esalen Nation. She'll tell us a little bit more about that. But first, Louise, tell us about yourself. My name is Louise Miranda Ramirez, and we use our maiden names to make sure of our lineage within the tribe. Um, we are Lone Costano and Esalen Nation, the indigenous people of Monterey County. Um, we have about uh, almost 700 tribal members. And uh, unfortunately, we are not federally recognized. Uh, we have petitioned and fulfilled the documentation. Um, but since there's not money or grants available right now, um, we're sort of at a standstill. But you keep very active. Well, I would hope most of our listeners by now have heard about the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, where they're trying to put in uh, an oil pipeline at the, I think it's almost on the border of North and South Dakota uh, across the Standing Rock Reservation. And I know it hasn't been in the news, the mainstream news much, but it's a very serious situation and it's a deep concern to all of us in the Native community here in the Bay Area. And very much like what they're doing at Standing Rock, it's happening right here in our own backyard, right here in Monterey. Correct. Um, we meet with various cities whenever they have projects. And the um, yes on Z is to s stop fracking. So when they put yes, you're accepting that you're you don't want fracking. Explain what fracking is for those who do not know. Fracking is a system of extracting the oil from the earth and using water which is contaminated with a lot of chemicals. And so therefore when the water is done uh, bringing up the, the oil it's extremely poisonous and has a lot of chemicals and being forced back into the filters, the natural filters of the earth. And it then is reused again when brought up through the system. And so when it comes back, when, when we're using it again, we're using water that has a lot of chemicals. Um, one of the things that we wanna make sure that is not done is that water not being used to water the fields and our food, therefore contaminating the vegetables that are being grown. You know, I don't think people make that connection. I, I can't understand why they don't, but the animals 
graze on the grass that's been grown from that water that's contaminated water that's in the ground and then the vegetables and things are grown in the ground with the contamination and then people eat that and they wonder why there's all these diseases and cancers and things and it's played off like oh we just, you know just you just don't want to do it you know right. for it's, whatever reason it's like it's not important enough and, and yet it's the most important thing we can do to protect our children and their their bodies are so sensitive and we need to make sure they stay healthy and this is all part of the process to make sure um, that there is no fracking and that I don't think people understand the ballot measure within Monterey County because there's a no on Z and there's a yes on Z. And no means you want it and yes means you don't want it. It is confusing. So it is confusing and it's a lot of money going into fight because the oil companies want to continue mm -hmm. you know they're not worried about the great amount of water that they use to do this process I had some figures so and I don't want to um, it says that there's 50.8 million barrels of fresh water used for oil extraction and that was in one year, within 2015. And so we're saying 50.8 50, 50 million barrels, and yet we only received 7.8 million barrels of oil that were produced. Wow. I was very impressed with the fact that Monterey would even have this initiative, the, the yes to, you know, to ban the fracking. That is impressive, and I wish people would understand that whoever developed this, the initiative, is really looking at the welfare of the future generations and, you know, the, the Mother Earth, and it's impressive that they even did that, and it, it's, it's a shame that people don't understand the right. value. Right, because the anti against the no on Z people um, are mostly oil companies and they're saying um, that this is going to cut thousands of jobs and yet statistics show that it's only, um, it's less than 270 jobs that would be changed and there are more jobs through agriculture right, and hotels right. And so it doesn't uh, really affect a lot, but I saw a commercial this morning uh, on TV for um, the no people, and it showed a fire engine rushing to an emergency, uh, and they said, well, if you stop this process, you're not going to have all the money to pay for this fire engine which is, is just so wrong, you know. It's a scare tactic. Right. They're sh saying, oh, um, you're gonna lose so much, let's pass it. But in reality, as in Oklahoma, who is stopping it, you know, all this fracking, they've had so many earthquakes. And this is the process that fracking does. And so we know that Santa Cruz, I believe, and San Benito County have already approved no fracking. And they went through that last year, and a lot of these same people are involved within Monterey County now, uh, wanting to make sure that the land is protected. That's what you have to do also. Change the mode of how you think. And when you see somebody that's checking out Tom to talk to the heart that way, I'm not going to lay in that heart in that hospital and start crying and tears coming out and I don't want to die and start crying around about it. You know what? If 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 you if your Christianity, if you I'm not, if you're a Christian, you know you're either going to heaven or hell. And the way some of you are fighting against death, 
seems to me you guys are thinking you're going to go to hell. <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't blame you for crying around, you know. But if you are, my God, put up a fight. <laughs> and make it work. Maybe the creator's going to give you another chance. Hey, look, you can work for Mother Earth. Go to work for Mother Earth. And then when you see signs where they're going to begin fracking, you know what to do then. You know, when they start contaminating the water, you know what your instructions are. You know what to ha you have to do, even if you're the only one out there. When you're in a bar and somebody starts, you know, picking on you because of the way you dress, either you've got to do one or two things. Either you leave in disgrace or you stay there and fight and saying, OK, let's talk about my dress. That's my dress code. How are you dressed? You know, let's talk about yours. What do you stand for? What is your purpose in life? And then you can start grilling them down. So we have major responsibility. <coughs> Naichi, by my nephew, his responsibility is to alert me when, when his father starts crying. And I gotta come over and talk to him about it. Things. So we have duties and we have responsibilities. And those <coughs> duties spell out protection. We are protectors of Mother Earth. We are protectors of the water. We are protectors of the air that we breathe. We are protectors of the water that we will drink and that we will give our children to drink. Our babies, give them water, good water. So those are some of the big responsibilities <coughs> that, that we have. And we pass on those responsibilities. And they don't get up and, you know, we don't ask them to sign a pledge or make a pledge. Do you accept these responsibilities? Once we give them the information, they are, they are the protectors then. It's already there. And they know it. And respect your elders. You and I have heard that all of our lives. What does that mean, respect our elders? Who are the elders? What age does it begin? <coughs> it begins when, when you slow down a little bit. Then <coughs> you'll notice that time will come. You're walking, you're walking as fast as I walk, and but if I'm getting out of a car for a long, after a couple hours ride, I have to stand there wake up my knees, wake up everything else in there and before I can start walking around. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But then age, but age is not, don't be, hide, don't be hiding behind age for your responsibility and your duty. If you're a hundred years, if I'm a hundred years old, I'm 80, I'm not gonna sit at home and you know, look up the look at the TV and say, "Oh, what are they doing on fracking? What are those guys up there doing? What is Standing Rock doing?" My job is to get up every day and demand no more fracking, demand clean water, demand clean air, clean soil for the crops. Andy said, I'm the president of the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council. And I want you to know the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council, with its leadership, has endorsed Measure Z. Yeah. We yeah, understand that it is important. We understand that water is important. Being in the Monterey Bay, as you can see around you, the fields, it relies on water, clean water. And we know what Measure Z stands for. That's why we are voting yes on Measure Z. The Monterey Bay Central Labor Council and its leadership in the past has brought together Blue Green Alliance. We brought together and put Mark Stone, who's now our assemblyman, on the Coastal Commission. That was quite a feat. 
we brought people together. That was labor, that was community, that was environmentalists, and we successfully put Mark Stone there. So we know what the mission is. We know, we understand, as Dennis said, jobs are jobs, but there are good jobs, and then there are jobs that aren't good jobs. And we want good jobs, we want reliable, we want to live. And we understand the water is the key component of that life. Thank you. Well, that was a very special event. Um, they brought in a special guest, Dennis Bank, who is the co-founder of AIM, which is the American Indian Movement. Mm -hmm. And he had come back from Standing Rock and was bringing the word out and prayers that we need to protect the rivers, we protect, protect all of our water sources as well as our oceans, because they're being affected as well with desalinization plants. And you know, so many are doing that now. That, um, and within Monterey County, there's already had the approval for two de uh, desalinization plants. And so there's this fact that we need to, um, to protect our water, all water, as well as the earth. And so, um, it was important to our people, the Ohlone, Costano, and Esla Nation, because the Salinas River is noted as uh, the point of our creation. And so it says that we came and um, people were found after the Great Flood at the Salinas River, and mm -hmm. therefore the popula population of our people started again. So we were quite active in being there as well because of the importance and our desire to make sure that the river is protected. We've been at numerous city council meetings, board of supervisor meetings within Salinas where they want to come in and just remove everything from the river and that would give farmers a little bit more land. but. The problem with it is the chemicals uh, that the closer they get to the river and they're sprayed, it goes into the river and throughout Monterey County. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we walked the land and prayed for um, the Creator to know that we want to protect our homeland as well. Um, we want to make sure that our ancestors' remains are, rem are protected because in Monterey County, there's a great amount of uh, progress, they call it, which is new buildings. Um, I mean, we all know how uh, we're going to give hundreds of acres to the racetrack. And that would have been a complete destruction of, of the sacred oak trees and of the land that had not been disturbed. We have land along the coast. Uh, um, um, I was at one of the cities yesterday that there is a parcel of land that this person wants to build a home on. And it would be a total of almost 8,000 square feet that he wants to put this home on this eight, a couple of acres. This land has never been disturbed, never. And the archeologists are saying, oh, I don't believe anything is there, but yet there's, it's all covered with midden, which is a soil that we know that our people um, lived on. And it's the oils and everything that w went into the, the soil. And it's covered with abalone shells and mussel shells. It has giant mortars, which are grinding rocks and pestles. They go on the ground and they up to four to five feet tall. And we want to protect them. And he wants to build this house because it's close to the ocean. Not caring if he's building his house on ans our ancestors, right? Correct. I mean, it's just... Right. I mean, we ask that there's no disturbance. So we know what Standing Rock feels like. Sure. We know why they're fighting for their ancestors. I mean, because we're fighting the same thing. 
uh, we're in the same way, except that we're going to have a building put on them. Uh, we have buildings that are being moved or knocked down, and, and yet we know there are ancestors there, um, new buildings going up everywhere. I, um, the last ancestor that was disturbed was 4,080 years old. And what do we hear? We hear that the owners can't protect them because the public knows where they're at or they don't have enough land. Uh, we have the cities uh, replacing sewer pipes. We're finding ancestors within that area and the cities don't want to give us any land to rebury our ancestors. They say, take them, but we're not going to help you. And so, I mean, this is all what we're going through. And maybe it's not exactly like Standing Rock um, because of the oil, and, but it's still in the name of progress, in the name of money. Of course. And, you know, they talk about the fracking and earthquakes. California's already at risk Correct. and making it worse. We're already at risk of water. We have, su we have such a shortage of water. And we're going to contaminate the little we have left. Right. It just doesn't make sense. Right. And, and then you look at it, and in, it was on the news the other day. I was paying attention in San Francisco. I don't know, remember the name of the building. But when they built that building, they said it would not was sink more than six inches. And it has now, I believe, they said it's gone 16 inches. You know, so you're saying, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. We're destroying where we live. We're not going to have a place to live. We're not going to have water. Water to drink, yeah. food to eat. And the air that we breathe. I mean, you know, when the oil pipes rupture or break, uh, they not only destroy the land or the water, it's the air. Down in Los Angeles, what was happening with the, the release valve from that refinery? Mm -hmm. It was contaminating the air for everyone. I mean, and people aren't paying attention. So, again, the initiative on the ballot is? Yes on Z. Yes on Z. And you would encourage people in the Monterey County area to vote yes on Z if they really care about their children, their families, their future generations, their grandchildren, to have a healthy life. You know, I, I've been told so many times Monterey County is such a spiritual place. We have to protect it. We, ha we have to. Um, I'm not involved in politics in that way, but I believe in protecting the earth and the water and the air. It's for all of our people, not only Native people, That's it's right. for everyone. That's right, and I think people forget that. I agree, you know? I agree. And we have to keep protecting, whether no matter where it is, and it's pretty much all over, all mm -hmm. over. It, it is know, all over, and I think that was a nice thing about Dennis Banks coming out. He brought the word. And you know, it's so important, our young people are hearing it. Our young people who have not stood up a lot for the culture are now standing and realizing, this is who I am and this is what I need to do. We have uh, young tribal members who went up, are at Standing Rock as well. Mm -hmm. And it is so heartwarming to know that they feel the pain that our people are going through, and they want to make a difference. And because they are our future leaders. Right, that is so true. So I wish you a lot of success in this initiative. I hope that people understand what it means to them yeah. to, to just survival. They should be protecting as well. So we stand with Standing Rock and we oh, stand definitely. with Monterey. Thank you. And your people. You. And we thank you for joining us. Uh, find us on Facebook and we'll see you next week on Native Voice TV. I grew up in one of those families too where 
I have no good memories of my father. You know, he's passed away, but he was very abusive. And um, it is something we need to go go over and that we need to change. And when it, with my kids, I said, never will I be like that with my children. And I mean, I had a, a special relationship with my daughter and it was really hard. She was my baby too, so when she passed away, it was extremely hard, and that's when you want to give up. And you feel like you have nothing. That's what I felt like at that time. That, why am I still here? What is it that I need to do? What came about was fighting. It's like every day here in Monterey County, I have to fight some city official for the ancestral remains that they're disturbing. We have to protect our ancestors. They don't care. I've been told they've been there for hundreds of years. Just leave them there. Would you leave a sewer pipe on top of your ancestors? Would you let them put tar on top of them and drive over them every day? No. It's the hardest thing I think I've ever done. I, I have about eight ancestors at home right now waiting for a reburial. I have cities saying, we're not giving you any place to rebury. We don't have any land for you to rebury your ancestors. I take care of them, I talk to them, and I know eventually there will be a place and I will be able to lay them back and protect them. I want a place where all of our people can go and know that our ancestors are there